Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Microsoft Surface Duo 2. Now this second generation smartphone with dual displays I think addresses at least on paper the majority of the complaints with Gen 1. A more narrow form factor, slightly larger displays, uh, more cameras and more importantly cameras on the rear of the device which was a big miss uh, by Microsoft in Gen 1. We also even have the ability to at least somewhat see notifications which is yet another improvement. Uh, so a lot of things I feel like have been addressed, but we're going to find out uh, through the course of my use with this and my final review will tell you, I think for the most part, what you need to know about this new smartphone. Now it does have two colors. As you can see, we're looking at the black color as opposed to the standard gray, uh, which was all that was available last gen. One thing I will say that Microsoft didn't address in this generation of this device was pricing. Uh, in fact, more expensive than last gen, and that's something I can't justify. Now the device did get a little bit heavier, um, but it is premium, that I can already tell, and it was premium last gen as well, so this is all to be expected. And I'm gonna try to remove this without uh, cavemanning it or barbarianing it, um, as I did in a previous unboxing. And there we have it, really nice looking, um, at least on the surface. Uh, see what I did there? and basically just one of the, I would say, nicer designs on the market, but not necessarily still ideal as a smartphone. And I think that's part of the problem uh, that this device deals with. Uh, it just isn't, when we think of smartphones, even I'm a third gen Z Fold uh, user, Samsung, of course, it just is, this is so wide, even with it getting narrow, more narrow than previous gen, and now we have a camera bump, which I've never been a big fan of, and I, even though this is going to improve the overall feature set of this device, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it. So basically we've got a 12 megapixel selfie cam right there, and then on the rear we have two more 12 megapixel cameras, uh, one with an optical zoom, and then an ultra-wide 16 megapixel shooter. So they've addressed the lack of rear cameras. I'm trying to power this on, but it may need to be plugged in there. I just felt a vibration, so it is booting up. Uh, and because we have newer software, this should bode well uh, for the Duo 2, because that was another area where Microsoft, I felt like, needed more time in the lab, and now they've had it. So we'll see. Uh, we do have support for uh, the pen, the Slim Pen 2, which is definitely a good thing. Some paperwork here, and then um, I'm assuming this is our charging cable. They do not include a brick. This is the, the new game in 2021. And if it does, um, which I know it does, help the environment, then that's a good thing, because I know anyone who's really out there, you know, bleeding edge customer wanting to buy the latest and greatest of even what I consider to be somewhat still a beta project with this phone, then you likely already have a charger that can support this since it doesn't um, support very fast charging to begin with. Let me go ahead and get the box out of the way. And, you know, this, as I stated, it really does address a lot of the problems. We have, besides many more cameras than the previous generation, I mentioned that the displays got a little bit larger. Um, they are uh, AMOLED displays, which, of course, is something I wish that Microsoft would bring to other devices in their Surface lineup. This is uniquely the only Microsoft product with uh, AMOLED displays, moving away from the IPS of yesterday. And then in addition to that, of course, and they're basically suggesting I pop open the SIM tray, which, let's see where that is, is right there at the bottom. Uh, three different storage capacities. Again, I think the pricing is a little bit steep uh, for what it is. And I think that most users are going to be somewhat challenged, excuse me while I enter my uh, Wi-Fi password here so we can connect, um, somewhat challenged to you know, using this in a traditional sense because it's just not a traditional device. So we're getting an update right out of the gate. Um, part of the beauty of this gen is that we do have Android 11, which was necessity for multiple displays on a single device. When Microsoft launched this last year, you know, Android was not really prepared for dual display devices. Yes, my, you know, Microsoft wasn't the first to do it. LG really was. And then you have products like the Fold series, which isn't two displays, but rather one. This is a case 
of course. And I do still think that uh, the Z Fold 3 is the more practical application. I don't think there's any question about it. But we have modern internals here, which is something we did not have last generation. So I do appreciate that, uh, starting with not just the cameras, the displays are a little bit better, or at least on paper they are. But most importantly, instead of 6 gigs of RAM, we now have 8 gigs of RAM, which is definitely approaching uh, a more modern internal build when it comes to the RAM count. Uh, but, you know, bear in mind that it's still far less than you get with something like the Z Fold 3, which is 12 gigs of RAM. Uh, and it, we'll see if it comes through on performance. Now, in terms of the processor, same CPU that you'll find in the Z Fold 3, which is the latest and greatest on the market, the Snapdragon uh, 888, and it is a 5G chipset. That's another thing that was lacking last generation, no 5G support. So I think that's relevant. Um, in terms of other things you should know, today is the launch day. Uh, the displays are 90 hertz each panel, of course, uh, which doesn't match the 120 that is becoming standard, but it's still enough in my opinion. I don't really think 120 is necessarily uh, needed for everything. I think 90 is pretty much the sweet spot. So we'll see how battery life uh, ends up faring. Now, I'm not expecting it to match my Z Fold 3. Uh, I'm just hoping it matches the previous generation of the Surface Duo. Uh, in terms of resolution, you're looking at uh, a total of uh, roughly 401 pixel uh, density PPI, which is pretty good. Um, one of the highest uh, PPIs are going to find on any Surface device, and we're looking at 1892 by 2068 res, uh, and you know 4x3 aspect ratio with these two 5.8 panels, which is pretty good. Now, whether or not this is for you is really going to be a matter of how useful you see having two independent displays as being. Um, I'm more of the mindset that I enjoy, you know, my Z Fold because I'd rather have one large display that I can split into two. Now, it doesn't. Uh, accommodate to full displays the way this device does, and that's what makes this unique. But the form factor, I th still think, is a little bit troubling, uh, the overall form factor in terms of palmability, and we're going to see. Uh, the battery is 4,449 milliamp hours, uh, and again, the quick charging is capped at 23 watts. So that's why I said not a big deal um, in terms of not coming with a wall charger. But to me, the bigger issue with this device really boils down to pricing. I mean, the fact that now we're looking at, you know, $1,500 as an entry point is just astounding. I mean, that's really the issue. We saw Samsung come in lower. Of course, Apple, which doesn't make any devices that compare to this or Samsung's folding devices, um, lower prices on their iPhone. That was their killer weapon, was, which I don't know if it was much of a killer, but their revolution was in pricing rather than hardware. And, you know, I thought Microsoft would follow suit on this realizing that with the adoption rate being so poor on Gen 1 of this device, that they really would have to come up with something else, which is pricing like everyone else, acknowledging that, you know, we, we need to come up with something less expensive. And they didn't do that. They said, we improved the device, we're going to raise the price. And we'll see how well that fares with the market. I still think it's really cool. Um, of course, we can't close this thing flush anymore because of uh, the camera module, but you know, while I'm not a huge fan of that because it was cool to be able to go completely flat, I also don't think that's the end of the world. I think it's a good thing, a better thing to have cameras that put it in the same class as other smartphones, which hopefully they do. Now, uh, the Wi-Fi performance here is not seeming excellent, but I'm not going to come to any, uh, you know, a rush to judgment. You can see that they've curved the OLED panels here into the edge. And the reason they've done that is that is how you are now going to be able to see notifications. So when the device is closed, we should be able, it's not turned on yet, but you can see some of the display here is exposed. And that is going to be how you're going to see notifications because historically last year, well, there just was nothing here. And it appears they've, unless I'm losing my mind, it seems like there's a pre-installed screen protector on this, but I may be wrong. Um, seems like it's picking up a lot of fingerprints, looks dirty already, so I'm not sure how much I'm digging that. But again, this is some of the nicest build quality um, and hardware on the market, um, top to bottom, everything they've done here. So there's a lot to like, just whether or not it's going to be practical is what I fear. Um, it's telling me, yeah, I thought the update was still in progress. And I know this is looking blown out, that's because it's incredibly 
uh, bright at this point, which I can crank down. It's not full brightness, by the way, for those of you that are wondering. Now it should be far more visible. You're also seeing uh, what appears to be a refresh on screen. I don't see that with my eyes. Now, if I crank it all the way up, it's going to be gone with the wind just because, again, of the brightness blowing things out. But, you know, it seems like a nice device, just like Gen 1. The question will be, how much better did the software improve more so than the hardware? Because I'm not really concerned about the hardware. It was the software experience. And again, how pocket friendly is this? Um, is your hand really large enough to palm this thing? Because the idea is that you're going to use it like this, really, a lot of the time. After all, this is where you have to put your ear to you know, take a call if you're not using speakerphone. So these are things we have to be aware of um, in terms of practical application. And when I put this side by side, again, with something like my Fold, just to give you an idea, you see the difference. Now, this is with the pen included, but this is much easier to palm, take calls. You know, people complain about how narrow the front display is on this device, but it's usable. There is no front display on this device, and I still think that that is a sore spot. Um, that's my opinion. Some people love this clamshell, but clearly the market didn't get on board with it. So I'm glad that Microsoft has not walked away from this because I think it has very unique potential. I'm just still not sure on whether or not everybody's lining up to pick up one of these. So stay tuned. Again, they've addressed pretty much everything. Uh, better displays, higher refresh rate, uh, of course, better cameras, as I mentioned. A little bit more narrow, although a little bit heavier because of that camera module. Hopefully battery life is pretty much on par, stays the same. You do have a fingerprint scanner, by the way. Um, so hopefully everything has stayed in line. But time will tell, obviously. And of course, I will be um, updating all of you on my experience, as well as eventually delivering a full review of this brand new Surface Duo. Two, I may even be including what pen performance is like, since I do still have a slim pen on hand, Slim Pen 2, which is another nice element of utilizing the full breadth of capability here, but I'm not sure that that's really a compelling element either, considering, of course, the Z Fold 3 has a pen and a larger internal display, and I mean continuous display. I mean, the internal screens here amount to 8.3 inches, but with a break, uh, that doesn't really amount to anything in terms of comparing to something that is continuous. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe, and please stay safe. Later.